as you're listening to the next piece, I would invite your eyes to glaze over to the left side where you see some small chairs and shoes. Those represent fatalities, 12 fatalities of Oregon's children due to child abuse and neglect last year. It's estimated that one in four girls and one in six boys are sexually abused by their 18th birthday. There were enough confirmed victims of child abuse and neglect last year in this community to fill over 30 school buses. There's just a, f a phenomenal problem in the area of child abuse and neglect. Infant toddler as an age is the largest um, demographic for homicides in our area. It's, it's just an enormous problem and needs to be addressed. When children are sexually abused, they're, they are in effect trained not to have healthy boundaries for themselves and they're trained not to value themselves. As a survivor myself, I can tell you that it is impossible to measure the toll that sexual abuse takes in terms of human suffering. To wait, for, to wait until you have 100% proof, you could wait forever um, because people who prey on children this way are really good at being sneaky. They're really good at lying. They're really good at not getting caught. I mean, this is a crime that happens in private. So if you have a suspicion, it's really important to act on it. And I think a great place in our community to start is to call Liberty House. All of the partners in, in the field of child abuse investigation 10 years ago said we really need a special place designed for children who begin to talk about those types of concerns. If you haven't been down in a while, please come. We have tours called the Voices of Children where you can come and, and see the way in which we're working with children and families. You can see the new layout too. As I walked through and, and um, became more and more acquainted with the work that they do there, all I could think of was that my life would have been completely, completely different had I had just any of that, any of those kind of resources. We have a, a comprehensive medical checkup that's available to be able to, um, to do an exam of the body, talk with children about their body, how they're feeling. Um, we ask lots of questions and check lots of parts and, and have a chance to talk about that. Um, we move into an interview. It's, it's a chance for talking time for children and we, we follow very careful guidelines, the Oregon interview guidelines and national guidelines for talking with children. If they think that you can handle the information, they may tell you some more. But it's very common for children to just tell a little bit at a time. If the adult responds by getting very upset, oh, I can't believe this, the children will often back off their, their, their disclosure. When Regina tells Mrs. Salvador that she's being sexually abused at home, Mrs. Salvador replies by saying, you know, thank you for telling me that's that was very brave of you to tell me, and I know exactly what to do to help. And she's very calm in her reply, and that's a really important thing for people to know. After a child has explained whatever it is they want to say to you, it's all right to comfort a child. Um, it's then real important to go call the police. And try to do that outside of the earshot of the child. It's important that children don't hear that process. Some children are um, scared by that process. But it's okay to tell children that you need to call the police because this is something very important and it will help them to be safe. People need to know in the community that making a report, um, it doesn't mean that the person is automatically assumed guilty. It just means that a proper investigation is going to happen, a thorough investigation, and every child deserves that. They feel much better after they have told somebody, after they know that somebody has listened what they had to say.